What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com. Coming back at you with another AMA, Ask Me Anything. This one's all about female hormones, how to manipulate the ketogenic diet and refeeds to get those hormones back up and functioning as they should. But before we dive into that, let's roll the intro. All right, this question is brought to us by Hannah, and she asks, how do you structure weekly refeeds for a female if you are working on correcting sex hormones through keto diet and strength training? Would you eat at a maintenance and periodically add surplus days or stay in a calorie surplus until your hormones are back to normal despite weight gain? All right, so it kind of depends on where the individual is coming from. If they just did a competition prep, they've been at a very low calorie intake for several months. As a result of that prep, and their hormones have tanked, then it's going to be a little bit different than if someone's just chronically been under eating for, you know, years or better. So let me just tackle it from both perspectives. From a, a client standpoint uh, that's going through a competition prep, if they're doing a ketogenic prep, if they're following my protocol, they will have implemented ketogenic caloric refeeds there for the last month or so, month and a half of their prep and their calories will be lower at that point, uh, but they'll still be taking in quite a bit of dietary fat. That dietary fat helps to mitigate and just hedge against any of the adverse effects of lower hormones in the context of lower calories. Uh, so that certainly helps. Because when, when your body fat's really low and you're following a traditional prep diet and your dietary fat's very low, then your ability to you know, maintain healthy hormone levels is not that great. You can kind of mitigate that by keeping your dietary fat relatively high in the context of very, very low body fat and very, very low calories. So if they're doing a competition prep with my ketogenic protocol, their, their hormones will still go down because that's just kind of the nature of the beast of doing a prep. But ideally, it won't be near as drastic as it would be had they followed a traditional prep with even lower calories and uh, likely very minimal dietary fat. So if they are doing that, if they are having weekly ketogenic caloric refeeds, then what I would suggest they do is basically bump up, after the show is over, we bump up protein back up to about a one-to-one -one between grams of protein and pounds of lean mass. So their protein's gonna be a little bit higher. That kind of ensures they don't have any muscle wasting in the context of the lower calories. And we'll continue to use those ketogenic caloric refeeds on a weekly basis uh, but they'll be decreasing as the weekly calories are increasing. So overall, total calories are increasing, but the need for the refeeds uh, decreases as the, the weekly calories go higher and higher. Uh, so that's what I'll do from a competitor standpoint. Um, and we'll basically just keep doing that with a weekly refeed or maybe sometimes two days a week refeed with a significant bolus of both dietary fat and dietary protein uh, to just help make the ever-increasing calories a little bit easier. And by not having just super high calories every day of the week, it ensures that you don't put on any unnecessary body fat too quickly post-show. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, say you have someone that's just chronically been under-eating for months and months and months or years even, and they're, they're not coming out of a competition prep, they've just been chronically underfed and nutritionally deficient, and their hormones have tanked as a result. In that situation, what I would recommend doing is make sure you're, you just return to some degree of you know, a maintenance intake sooner rather than later. The problem with that is their maintenance intake is likely quite low, uh, so you can't just plug in a, a generic calculator and use the maintenance intake it gives you because it's not taken into consideration that your hormones are tanked, that your metabolism is likely downregulated. Everyone's activity and their expenditure is going to be a little bit different as well. Um, so what I like to do from a maintenance standpoint is kind of just start relatively close to where they're at from an intake standpoint currently, and then just be relatively aggressive in increasing those calories week after week after week. So for instance, um, if someone comes to me, I've, I have this happen all the time, like a, a female client will come to me, they've been chronically under eating for years, um, and they're probably around 1400 calories. Rather than me plug in their height, weight, and stats into a generic macro calculator that says that their maintenance should be 2100 or something and then jumping them up to that, I'll start them relatively close to that 1400 mark, probably 1500. If they've been at around 1400, I'll, I'll give them like a 100 calorie boost. 
start them at 1500 and then just be relatively aggressive at increasing those calories week after week after week coming from both protein and fat sources not so much increasing dietary carbohydrates at all because it's not really necessary and if they're following a fat adapted ketogenic approach there's not really any benefit that comes with that it'll also result in more water retention if they have more carbs so if you're increasing calories you're probably going to have a little bit of an increase in body weights potentially even body fat so the more we can strip away from excess fluid retention is going to be good because that just messes with people's heads that much more and i don't want it to mess with people's heads it's a very very hard sell to tell somebody hey look i know you want to lose weight i know you want to lean out but your hormones are not stable your metabolism has been down regulated before we can do anything else we need to just increase calories do basically a reverse diet um, and just kind of reset your baseline at a healthy point so from a hormonal standpoint Make sure they get a baseline hormone check, kind of see what those numbers are, see what their testosterone is, their progesterone, their estradiol, their estrogen, all that stuff. See what their, their baseline is, and then ideally, you know, gradually increase calories from both protein and fat. Uh, you could do a refeed if need be. Um, certainly not necessary, but you certainly can if that makes it more tolerable. And then get like a, an updated hormone panel every six months or so, um, so that we can kind of see if everything's trending in the right direction. A good general rule of thumb is that, you know, when, I, when I'm working with, with clients, especially ones that are athletes, ones that are training on a regular basis, you know, at a maintenance intake, I like to see all my female clients doing just fine at a maintenance above 2,000 calories. I mean, I eat about 3,000 to 3,300 calories at maintenance um, with my stats. Most of my female athletes are eating well over 2,000 calories in their, you know, maintenance or building phase. I've got some female clients right now that are eating 3,500 calories. I've got some that are eating consistently 2,700 calories. You know, this notion that women should only eat 1,100 calories is just bogus. That's not optimal. You don't need that little. Um, I don't even take my clients that low when they're in the middle of a competition prep and we go to the very lowest with their intake. You know, I typically don't ever take my clients below 1,300 calories for a very finite period of time in a competition prep. So one of the messages that I'm really just trying to beat home with everybody is that chronic undereating malnutrition from just lack of consumption, um, you know, for month after month or year after year is certainly not optimal from a, a muscle building standpoint, from a metabolic standpoint, from a hormonal standpoint. It's just not good. Um, if you're eating more food, you're going to be able to build more lean muscle tissue. That lean muscle tissue, ideally you're training hard to incentivize that growth in lean muscle tissue, will cause more uh, metabolic demands. Your body's going to require more calories to fuel that muscle growth and maintain that lean muscle tissue. So basically, you're just going to upregulate your metabolism, upregulate your body's nutritional needs, and you should be able to tolerate more calories than 1,100 calories. So kind of going off on a tangent right now, but that's just where I feel about this because I see so many people, men and women, but a lot of women who have just been following this dietary dogma train for years and years and years of eat less, eat less, eat less, and it's certainly not doing them any favors from a hormonal standpoint, from a health standpoint, from a muscle building standpoint. So I really want to shift that narrative and encourage people to fuel their body appropriately, optimally, make the most of that, give your body reason to, to build more muscle tissue with that increased fuel. And then when you need to transition to a fat loss phase, you've, you've got a much better foundation and baseline to start from. So Again, I don't want to make this too long-winded, but that's kind of my take on that. So hopefully that answered your question, Hannah. You requested some chocolate malt keto bricks, so I've got those headed your way right now. Uh, for those of you that do not know how these AMAs work, if you scroll down, there's a link in the description uh, with a Google form. Hit that link, submit a question. If I use your question on one of these videos, I'll send you some free keto bricks with a flavor of your choosing um, as a token of gratitude for all the good questions. So... Thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate the question, Hannah, and I'll catch you next time.